London is a wonderful place and there's much to see and do, but here are 10 more quirky things in London that you might have missed. Number 1. The Roman Girl You all know the Gherkin, an iconic London building at 30 St Mary Axe, named after the medieval church that used to stand on the site. When the site was cleared after the 10th of April 1992 bomb attack, an interesting archaeological item was found, the carefully buried remains of a teenage girl dating to about 400 AD. She was exhumed and stored away from the site for over 10 years during the redevelopment of the area before being reburied on the site. Look at the stone benches around the building and you'll find a memorial to the girl with the Latin inscription Dis Manibus Puella Incognita Londoniensis Hic Sepulta Est To the spirits of the dead, the unknown young girl from Roman London lies buried here. There is no way of knowing if she was a Roman, but it's worth spending a few moments at this site and imagining what Britain must have been like for the teenage girl back in 400 AD. It's a sad addition to the story that one of the three deaths during the bomb attack was that of a teenage girl. So think of her too when you visit this memorial. Number two, the Hardy Tree. Behind the bustling St Pancras station is the peaceful St Pancras Old Church and Graveyard, which contains many fascinating things to see. It's here you'll find what has become known as the Hardy Tree. In the 1860s, the railways were expanding rapidly and the need arose to clear a patch of graveyard. In 1865, the gruesome task of exhuming the bodies was given to the young Thomas Hardy, who was training as an architect at the time. This resulted in many headstones being moved and they can now be found surrounding an ash tree close to the church. There's no real evidence that I've found that this was their intended resting place. It may just have been a convenient place to temporarily stack the headstones. Nor strong evidence that Thomas Hardy thought up the idea and placed them there as an architectural feature. But after years in place, they've become embedded in the tree's roots and make for a very unusual feature well worth going to visit. It's interesting to note that many of the stones have numbers carved on their sides and this may have been done at the time when the original occupants were being catalogued either before or after the move to a mass grave. Do look up Hardy's 1880 poem, The Level Churchyard, the writing of which may have been subconsciously influenced by his unpleasant task back in the 1850s. Number three, the gas holders. A lot of development involves demolishing the old to make place for the new without any reference to what's been before. An excellent example of where the old has been retained and the new combined with it is the gas holders, a modern development of flats inside the structure of old gasometers. A good way to visit these structures is to hire a Boris bike and ride it to them along the towpath of the Regent's Canal. The supporting steelwork, known as the guide frames, from three decommissioned gasometers was recovered, sent to Shepley engineers in Yorkshire for refurbishment and re-erected on their current site. One of the sets of steelwork, known as Gas Holder 8, recovered from St Pancras Gasworks and Grade 2 listed, has been transformed into Gas Holder Park. It encloses a peaceful grassy area and is adorned with mirrors. This place is well worth a visit and it's a nice place to take a rest on a bike trip to Camden Locks. Got one million in your back pocket? Well, why not consider a studio flat there? Number four, the Picasso mural. Arrive by train at Euston and want to escape the bustle for a quiet coffee or a bite to eat and see a Picasso mural at the same time? Just up the road is the fascinating and free Welcome Collection Museum. Part of the Wellcome Trust, it contains thousands of medical artefacts that Sir Henry Wellcome collected over the years. As you enter, look out for the sculpture of a man made by Anthony Gormley stuck to the ceiling of the foyer. Children will enjoy the library reading areas much as adults. 
But on a wall, just on the way into the library, is a section of wall from number 22 Torrington Square, a house that's since been demolished. One night in 1950, the owner, Dr John Desmond Burnell, known for his work on X-ray crystallography and a very interesting man in his own right, was holding a dinner party and Picasso was a guest. Furnished with a crayon and possibly quite a few drinks, Picasso sketched the Bernal Picasso as it's become known, the only Picasso mural created in England. The museum is free and well worth a visit and it will be a place that you'll return to again and again. Number five, the Robert Burns statue. If you hail from Scotland, no visit to London will be complete without a pilgrimage to the statue of Robert Burns in Victoria Embankment Gardens. Ravi Burns, or the Ploughman Poet, is regarded by many as the National Poet of Scotland and he was highly regarded in Soviet Russia too. If you don't know much of his work, you're bound to know Old Lang Syne, commonly sung at New Year. Burns Night has become an important annual event that began when a few of his friends met for a supper on the fifth anniversary of his death. It's a chance to recite Burns poetry, eat haggis and of course drink plenty of Scottish whisky. Number six, the East India Meridian Line. The Prime Meridian is a cartographic concept whereby a great circle passing through the North and South Poles is drawn on a map or a globe. One of the places it passes through is Greenwich due to the observatory that was used to determine its position being located there. Vital for shipping and navigation, it also marks the dividing line between the Earth's eastern and western hemispheres. One of the places that it passes through, close to Greenwich, is East India DLR station. And if you look at Electron Tower, the tall building next to the easterly platform, you'll see a line going all the way up the side of the building. If you stand across it, you'll have one leg in the east and one in the west. Actually, over the years, with the slight move of the observatory at Greenwich, and now with the introduction of GPS, the prime meridian is about 100 metres east of this point. But it's still a fun thing to do, to look out for, and one I guess that many people miss as they enter and leave East India DLR. Number seven, sundials and the Burdett Coots Memorial. Telling the time has always been important, and before the advent of mechanical clocks, the sundial proved invaluable. There are lots of these all around London, and I'll probably make them the subject of a video in their own right. But if you take the time, you'll begin to spot them more and more on your travels. Here are two to get you started. The first one is grade two star listed, and is to be found in the public gardens at St Pancras Old Church, the site of the Hardy Tree, and is part of the Burdett Coots Memorial. Funded by the great philanthropist and heiress of the Coutts family fortune, Baroness Burdett Coutts, the first woman to be given a peerage and who lived with the woman for over 50 years. It records the names of those whose graves had been dug up unceremoniously when land was needed for the expansion by the Midland Railway Company. Of the French names on the memorial, that of Chevalier Deal catches the eye. French diplomat, spy and famously androgynous cross-dresser. There's a whole video just in this memorial. Just above the iron sundial are the words Tempus Edax Rerum. Time devours all things. Number eight, the Torren Street sundial. Another sundial to track down is in Torren Street, Islington, on a wall of a modern building, opposite the do what you love tile mural wall. It's huge and only marked for times from 8am to 1pm. It's supposedly set up for British summertime rather than GMT, though it was too cloudy to test this when I last visited to take the photograph you see now. Number 9. The Attendant Cafe. Sitting at the eastern end of Foley Street in Fitzrovia on a wide pavement is what looks like a railing clad grave or mausoleum. It's in fact the beautifully ornate entrance to a Victorian public toilet. But now the penny you will spend, rather than relieving you, will go a short way to buying a frothy cappuccino. Finding a use for these subterranean toilets has not been easy, but this one has been repurposed as The Attendant, a small cafe and coffee shop. Sit at an ornate urinal, 
below the cistern and sip on an orange juice or nibble on a salad. This place is really unusual and will make you giggle. Oh, and by the way, it does have a toilet. Number 10, London's sandy beaches. When the tide is out, the banks of the Thames become exposed and in places, sandy beaches appear. I'm sure Londoners know the locations of many of these well, but they are nice places to seek out. Some are difficult to get down to, but others, like the one at Cumberland Wharf near the Rotherhide station, is easy to access and you can spend a few moments walking on the sand in an inner city location. A quite surreal and restful experience. So, London is a wonderful place to visit, with so much to see. I hope you've learned a bit more about the unusual things out there to find and you feel inspired to track down some of them. Let me know in the comments below how you get on. More quirky London videos to come. Enjoy your exploring and most of all, enjoy this great city.